Hi, I'm Dan from MRT. If you want to see me build this half-built ship, paint it and weather it from turning up from this to this. Gee, that didn't take very long, did it? To give you some sort of idea of the sheer size of this boat, it's currently, well, not currently, it's actually 20 inches long and four and a half inches wide. Uh, looking forward to doing this build. Let's get back to the bench. So there are little detail boxes there that I'm gonna do. I'm just trying to concentrate on doing some chipping around the edges there. So um, I'll do that with some rust effects and I'll show you how to do that. But what I've got there is just a very tiny little sponge and it's just a matter of, it's, it's almost like a dry brushing technique. So I'm just getting most of the paint off. And I'm just gonna work along the edges there just to, to feather the colors to, to give that chipping effect. So what I'm finding is you start with a darker color first, which is like a, a, a raw or burnt umber. So that's the, the sort of effect that I'm after there. You can sort of see just by just working on those edges and just grading up the colors, you really do get quite a nice um, chipping stroke weathering effect on it. So I'll, I have gone back through this with most of the five colors in that set. Um, it does take a long time to do it, so just got to be patient and just uh, work away. Less is more, so it's once you, if you go overboard, you, you pretty well got to repaint it again. I did have to do that on one occasion. I did repaint it white to so sort of start again because I went in a little bit heavy. So as I say, less is more. So there's pretty well the, the finished product. So I like going back in through with a lead pencil, so you can sort of see what it does there. It just sort of accentuates those latches and the hinges there. So it brings it back to gives it like a bare metal look, which is uh, quite realistic and quite a nice effect. Thanks, good stuff. From Trains and Dioramas for showing me this uh, handy little technique. The thing I wanted to show you is the the brass set sheet. There's probably two or three of those in the model. So it's literally well over a hundred little brass set pieces. So what I'm cutting off there is with a Xeron little uh, photo etched shears. I can highly recommend them. I'll put a link below. So that little piece there is little hand wheel to uh, do up the, the winch on the front of the ship, which I'll show you how I build that shortly. So probably one of the, the bits I really wanted to show you how all this weathering really comes together on this boat is the, the foredeck there. You can see the, the the deck plate there so that's exactly the same color as spray painted as before in episode number one so what there is in that jar is isopropanol with a few tablespoons or teaspoons i should say of indian ink so it's just a matter of going through and what that does that just brings out the highlights and gives you nice contrast before you go through the rest of the weathering all right so i'm going in with their sponge technique so that's uh, the the rust color so i'm just going to put that on just a very tiny little sponge with a forcep type uh, tweezer there so it's just a matter of what I'm doing I'm just going through and methodically just working through just building those colors up in the sort of the areas that I think the rust is going to build so the area I'm working on the middle there is um, where one of the winch sits for for the anchors to the boat so I'm sort of guessing that it's going to be a high used area it's got the chains coming up which is going to be full of the seawater and just over time that's just going to grade that that part of the integrity of the boat so it's just a matter of uh, building up those colors so all in all i'll probably use i think it's about five colors in the vallejo set that i'm using the the rusting and chipping colored so it's really up to the individual how far you want to go with this weathering or do it at all you could have a pristine boat that's uh, well kept also so there's one of the lovely little details of front end of the boat. So that's actually the chain winch for for the anchors of, of the boat. So um, you can see the little wheels there that I cut out earlier from the, the brass etch. So the way I've weathered that up is exactly the same process as I did before is, as you can see, I'm going in there with the, the sponges, I'm just trying to work up the areas where over time we're going to get wear and tear and where the seawater is going to sit and ultimately rust this little part. So now it's just a matter of um, I'm going through and gluing all these parts in now because I sort of want to put them in situ and then work out some more rusting and sort of just build up the rust ever so lightly. So the key is start with a very basic rust, work your way through and just build the colors as you see fit to get the degree of rusting or weathering effects that you're after. So there's another little detail part that's made out of resin. So what that is, that's a, a chain guide for, for the anchor system or the pulley system. Uh, what I've gone through, I painted that with like a bronzy color same sort of thing, I've gone back in with the sponges, but then you'll see what I'll do. I'll go through with a, um, a lead pencil 
and just bring it up. So there, there's the uh, all those items in situ. So now I've started to just build that that rust formation again. You can see all the, all the different colours I've got there. Now it's just a matter of just stippling that out because what I'm trying to do is grade it out. Obviously, more rust towards the the winch there to sort of grade the the colouring out to make it look a bit more realistic and feathering the edges. All right, so there's sort of the result I'm trying to achieve there. So obviously there's a lot more parts to go in there yet, but we'll get to those shortly. So I've pretty well finished the front here now. So you can see I've glued all the, most of the detail parts in. It's quite a busy sort of front end of this boat. So you can see the chain holders that I'm pointing to there. And obviously the winch is sat in there nicely. Probably won't go through any more weathering. I've sort of just touched the, the top there, as you can show with the, the skewer and also obviously some more tie down points. I've still got the, the further tie down points at the left hand side there as I'm indicating. Um, also put that uh, little box through that I, I weathered up earlier. And all these techniques are pretty well the same the way I've done it all the way through. It's either a sponging technique or the lead pencil to sort of bring it back to the bare metal. So now we've got the, the chain, which is obviously forms part of the, the anchor system there. So obviously I don't want to leave it gold. So what I'll end up doing is weathering that up and linking it through the inch there and through those little pilot holes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back through with a bit of a wash just to tie those rusted areas together a little bit more. So it's very similar to what I did to all the staunchons and all that on the deck area. So I'm just going to go back in through with a reasonably fine brush there, sort of a, a number one or a number two. Is you sort of you get it on a slight angle and then you just run it along those, those weld lines. And what that actually does, the capillary action of the very fine sort of uh, liquid there it just finds its own level and just starts running and actually looks quite realistic but what it's actually also doing is tying the rest of the uh, the rusted effects together and just feathering those edges out to make it a little bit more realistic Once we got the rigging, so it's got a quite a comprehensive instruction booklet for the rigging. So it's just a matter of following it methodically through and ticking them off as you go. It is a very, very finicky part of this process. So I'll try to video it the best I can. So there's a whole lot of staunchions and all that that we use. So it's just a matter of tying them off um, as I've done there, just some crude knots to do with the thinnest sort of cotton I use there. And it's just a matter of getting a pair of squizzes there, which are used for decals, but it came in very, very handy for this, this purpose. And then you cut the, the knot back as close, sorry, the, the off cut as close to the knot as you can. And then what I'll do, I've got a little bit of um, Elmer's glue there just to put it on the knot to, to solidify it so they don't come undone. What I did at this point, I tied a whole lot of them off and then I just went around the base of the, the hull there, or on the deck I should say, and just glued them all in, to, in their positions with the glue set. There's probably eight or nine in that, that location just alone. So you're gonna have to try to work out the best way forward to sort of keep them all the um, becoming tangled because it does get out of control very, very quickly. Next comes the turnbuckle, you can see that of uh, Put a little dob of glue on that as well. There's a myriad of these. You can see that these are all little brass bits that I showed you before. So I've pre-painted them up. I went through and undercoated them with a, a primer from the rattle can and then painted them white, uh, the same white as uh, the pilot and the like. So as you can see that this is a very fiddly, fiddly process and it's like threading a, a hundred I think a hundred needles probably worse uh, so just be patient uh, hence probably why it took so long for me to get this video out you can see I'm just struggling to get that through the little hole um, there's no way of making the hole any bigger if I was to do this again I'd probably buy scale rigging um, it's probably just a little bit better product than um, the twine or sorry the the cotton that I use I think if I was going to build a, a ship similar to this again, I'd probably try to make up some sort of jig to, to do this rigging. You can see with the turnbuckle there, you've got to try to make them look half uh, presentable. So some of them I've done, I think I've done a reasonable job. Some of the early ones I've gone back and redone them um, purely because I, the, either the knots are too big or the, the turnbuckle there, as you can see, I'm just trying to get a, a constant distance with all of them. I think there's about nearly 12 of those uh, along the boat. I'm certainly not going to bore you with the amount of rigging that I actually did on this boat. It took me literally probably longer to do the actual rigging than the rest of making the whole boat. So after the frustration of doing the 
rigging, so to speak, I quite enjoy doing the mast. So there's quite a bit to them. You can see there's, there's three different size pieces of styrene tubing there as it's sort of a, it's thicker at the bottom as it sort of works its way up. So what I'm doing there, I'm just measuring up uh, the various heights. So it's all on the, the rigging instructions. So what that actually does, there's various rigging components of little brass etch that you put on there. So it's just, um, I'm measuring them up the best I can to, to get them in place where they need to be. So you'll see there, I'm adding a little bit of glue to that eyelet. Now, I don't know whether it was a mistake on my part or that of Artitech. So that ring is meant to slip over the thick part of the mast, but um, the diameter of the, the mast is too great. And that's obviously the definitely the mast that came with it. So all I had to do was ended up just snipping them around, uh, snipping those little rings in half and then gluing it that way. It was a little more tedious and laborious, however, um, came through quite nicely. Because if you tried jamming it on, it would just would have uh, ruined the brass edge. So I'm just gonna go in there and just paint one of the little bells up. I'm um, just using a Tamiya copper color paint there, uh, XF6. Uh, link will be in the description below. So the next little portion of the mast build is to do the the ladders that go up to, to the upper rigging. So these yet again are a very fine detailed brass etch. They're a beautiful little piece and a little bugger to put together, but uh, they do look very nice. So just a matter of going through, I used a different glue. I used uh, CA glue to stick these together because um, I found I needed the, the glue off to go a lot quicker than say an Elmer's or a, a tacky glue. So looking back at uh, that rigging the way I'm doing that now, I really can't see any other way I have could have done it. So you can see just the sheer volume of the rigging wires that you've got to put in. So please comment below if someone has made similar boats on how to move forward with some sort of tidying up type scheme, for want of a better phrase. So I'm assuming the, the tall ship guys and girls out there that make the, the bigger type ships with even more rigging again, they would come up with some sort of jig, I'm assuming, to, to deal with the, the complex rigging, but probably more so than what their boats have got or ships have got than what I've got. So that's probably what I would do next time. Um, as I said, the rigging took probably longer than the whole rest of the boat because what I was finding is the, the type of yarn that I was using or cotton, I should say, just wasn't quite, and it had it just frayed up at the ends, which made it a little bit more difficult to pull all those um, fine cottons through the, the very tiny holes. That's the end of this video series, so I'm hoping you enjoyed it. Uh, it's quite a complex build from my point of view and very complex to videotape it, so I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ask any questions, comment below, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad tech